The views expressed are not those of local community broadcasting, WYMLLP, or its management, volunteers, or underwriters. Greetings and welcome to the Personal Safety Show. I am Marcus Melnick from Firearm Mentor, your host, and as everybody knows, I did go to the USCCA conference this fall, met a bunch of great people, including Rafael Del Valle from Bursa Firearms, and we're going to talk about Bursa as a brand and his background. Rafael, thank you very much, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Terrific. Can you tell everyone, what is your personal origin story? What's your firearms background, law enforcement, military, and how did you get involved with Bursa? I actually was not in either law enforcement or military. When I graduated college at University of Colorado, I got a job working for Spyderco Knives right out of college and started doing sales. And that's how I got into the industry and went from there, was working for a large wholesale distributor called Ellett Brothers in South oh, Carolina. Yep. And got to know the folks at Bursa real well, and they had a job open up for a sales manager and went to work with them there and worked myself up to director of sales and marketing, and, and that's where we're at now. Terrific. Where is Bursa located? Our U.S. facility is in Cartersville, Georgia, right north of Atlanta. Okay. But Bursa was founded in 1958 in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Well, that segues into my next question. Can you talk yeah, about yeah. the history and background of the company? So, like I said, 1958 in Argentina, it was founded by three Italian guys that had moved from Italy to Argentina during in the mid-50s, early to mid-50s, looking for a better life for opportunities. And they went there, and all of them were machinists, all three of them. And they eventually went from making gun parts to starting their own gun company. Wow, so it's 50, 65 years old. this year. Yeah, I had to do the math in my head, <laughs> the new math. <laughs> Had somebody not told me that, I would have known it so quickly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, had to, I had to process it. What you don't know is I used to be involved with a pro firearms group in Illinois way before uh -huh. I met you, and one of my jobs was to select the firearm for the monthly drawing. Yeah, it was a Bursa Thunder one of, one of the uh -huh. months. The person who got it was very happy with it. I wanted to get it, yeah. but I didn't win. So <laughs> whatever, but I'm, I'm familiar with the Thunder model. You know, they call it... And, and I'm not trying to poo-poo it at all, but they called the yeah. poor man's James Bond gun. We've, we've heard that a million yeah, times. Yeah, that's not what it is. If you look at guns that were being manufactured in Europe in the 50s, right, which is where these guys came from and when they started that with this style of gun, you look at the old CZs and the old SIGs and right. the Makarov, all that, and the Walters, and they all shared that similar profile. Obviously, the Walther PPK being the most famous, so that's where we get lumped in with that. But at, when, when you look at the pistol internally, it's actually much more similar to the Makarov oh. than it is to Walther. Now, profile-wise, similar, but internally, it's uh, it's much more similar to the Makarov than the, than the Walther. I did not know that. So I'm, I'm on the website. I'm, I poke around a little bit, and yeah. there's a feature I want to ask you about, specifically on the Thunder. I'm looking at the micro compact, the subcompact, and they all have a little bit of a different beaver tail. Can you explain? And you might, you may know, you may not know. I don't know. Can you explain why that is? You're looking at the Thunder 380 and then the Thunder 380 CC. Yes. And that's the CC. Just it has a shorter beaver tail, just because that gun is, as it states, it's the concealed carry version. So if you take the design of the Thunder 380 and you slim it down as much as possible okay. and make it snag free as much as possible. It's basically just to make it smaller and more concealable. Okay. There's, there's, there's no real reason to it beyond that. Okay. It's real estate is yep. what you're saying. Exactly. That's a great way of putting it. Okay. So I'm now I'm looking at the 380 combat plus and then the X which mm -hmm. I'll, I'll ask you about the X separately. Yep. But it looks like the X has a longer beaver tail, and maybe that's my angle. I don't know. Uh, the X should have the exact same beaver tail as the Thunder 380, the standard Thunder. It's just got the threaded barrel. Ah, okay. I see that now. All right. And that's what any of our guns that have an X, that would denote the fact that it's got a, a threaded barrel for Russian or rider or whatever you want to put on there. So I don't want to be a 
Debbie Downer, but I'm about to be. Are you familiar <laughs> with all the laws that came into being this year in Illinois? Yes. I it's don't, Debbie Downer for people that live in Illinois. Y- yes, <laughs> yes. I don't foresee this really impacting you because your stuff you have threaded and non-threaded, but right. as a company, how do you navigate the myriad of laws of magazine capacity, of all these other sometimes they're stupid laws? admittedly. How do you navigate the, in the states where there is more restrictions? California, well, Illinois, et cetera. You know, I would tell you that probably 90%, 90 plus percent of our business is selling to wholesalers. So we leave it kind of, that's that once they buy it, where they sell it is up to them. But it's pretty simple for the dealers that we do sell to in the different states. We've just got codes that we put into our computer that it like, let's just say Maryland has a 10 round magazine capacity, right? Mm -hmm. You can't enter an order for a dealer in an FFL in Maryland for anything that's got a capacity higher than 10 rounds in our, in our system. And I, and I believe that would be the case with most firearms companies. They just, and the way the law is written actually in most States, we can sell the gun to a dealer in that state. The dealer just can't sell it to, in retail in that state. So let me ask you this, and I've seen this happen to the, uh, just in talking about other manufacturers, the Glock 17, 17 rounds, as well as some other other models. And they sure. started making 15 round magazines for the 17 round models, so they can sell yes. them. Are you guys looking yep. at doing something similar? We have 10 round magazines for any of our guns that are higher than 10 round capacity. Do you have 15 rounders? Illinois is 15 rounds, that's why I'm asking. The only gun that Bursa manufactures that's over 15 rounds would be the TPR 9mm full size, okay. which is 7 rounds. We've got a 10 round magazine. We do not have a 15 okay. round magazine. Yeah. Yeah, just a but every question. other gun that we make is under 15 rounds, so it's not that big of a concern for us. So this is, I'm going to ask you a, and I'm making a joke here, a loaded question. If, uh-huh. if I wanted uh-huh. to buy a, a Burst of Thunder extra magazine, would you ship to Illinois? Like a high-capacity magazine? No, like a seven- or eight-rounder. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Some companies, and I've encountered this, I recently tried to order a 13-rounder. They wouldn't ship to Illinois, and I, I asked them why, and their attorneys told them they can't because they don't yeah. want to get messed up with it. Okay, so that, that answered that question. If, uh, it's, if it's within the laws of the state of Illinois, we'll, well, of course we'll do it. Perfect. Can you explain the difference between the Firestorm and Thunder models? Firestorm came about years ago. Bursa used to be imported by a company called Eagle Imports. Mm -hmm. And Eagle Imports also imported, besides Bursa, they imported Llama from Spain, Metro Arms from the Philippines. There's a Comanche, which was a revolver line from Argentina also. But what they did was they did distributor or wholesaler exclusive line with a couple Bursa guns, a couple Llama guns, and, and a Metro Arms gun. And they so they, they created this sub-brand called Firestorm. Ah. And it was only available through distributors. That just explains where the brand came from. The reason there's a Firestorm pistol that still exists to this day is, as we were talking about laws in Illinois, California has all these crazy laws. Yes. And one of their crazy laws is that your handgun has to be on an approved handgun roster to be able to be purchased in the state of California. There's a bunch of purses that were on that list, and this Firestorm 380 was also on the list. There were changes made to the Thunder 380s, you know, and because of the changes made to those guns, they fell off the list. They couldn't remain on the list. They had to be resubmitted and there's they would have never passed again because california has a thing a micro stamping law where the firearm or the firing pin has to have a micro stamp on it oh i didn't so, know that it, yes and so it's a, basically a fingerprint for every gun it's impossible to make nobody can make it so therefore there's no new guns that ever get on this list oh uh-huh. uh, it's a bunch of outdated guns well long story short the firestorm had been discontinued but was still on the list the new generation of Bursos fell off the list and couldn't be resubmitted. Well, we were like, well, shoot, that Firestorm's still on there. Let's make an antiquated version of the Thunder 380, which was, and make it exactly how it was for the state of California. That's it. It's an older version of a Thunder 380, 
marked Firestorm because of this project that we did. And it's only available still because of the laws in California. Okay, brilliant. I, I do like so the finger songs, grooves on a, it. I know it's a roundabout thing. No, it's, the, I get it. The differences between them is it's an older version of a Thunder 380. That's it. Okay, fair enough. Yep. Fair enough. You got the history of it, I guess. Awesome. <laughs> One of the things that I really just was amazed at, and maybe it was just because I was naive, is I didn't realize you guys made AR-15 platforms as well. That's brand new. That's brand new. It's about, okay. been about a year, year and a half. That's why I wasn't and aware. All right. That's the first gun that we were making in our factory in Georgia. Of course, we want to sell them here in the U.S. The main reason we started making them was for the police in Argentina. They requested it. We are making them here and exporting them there, but we're also exporting them all over the world. Because you know, Bursa is a very global brand, much more global than you would think by the size and popularity of the, here in the U.S., but it's a very big name brand in Central and South America and in Europe and in Africa. Well, that brings me to my next question, which is off script, so I apologize. I don't mean to surprise you, but... Can you share what law enforcement agencies and or militaries use Bursa products? Right now in Argentina, every police officer from the small cities to the federal level carries a Bursa, every single police officer. And then there are several police departments in Brazil. I'm not going to try to name the names of the places that have no, because I'm okay. not certain. But, and then you have the majority of the police in Uruguay and in Paraguay and a lot of agencies in Guatemala and Nicaragua and Panama are also carrying bursas. Interesting. I had no idea. Price point on them is what I would call extremely reasonable. Mm -hmm. Very reasonable. And for similar guns that would be your competitors, I, I think bursa is a better product. Yes, you know, in the, the price in the price ranges that we're talking. Yeah, we um, for good or bad, we're not one of these companies that says, "Okay, we're going to take forty dollars and add it to the price of every gun for marketing purposes." Right. So every time you open up a magazine, you're not going to see a purse ad. We're not a huge company either, so word of mouth has worked very well for us. Social media has worked well for us. We like to make it, the gun of, as affordable as we can for everybody while providing it still with a really good product and a really good warranty. What is the warranty, as long as you mentioned that? The way we state it, you know, on, on paper, is it's, it's a lifetime service contract to the original owner. Okay. What that means is we will repair or replace the gun at our discretion for as long as, the, as, as you have the gun. Now, if you happen to buy one used and you send it in, we don't ask for like proof of purchase or anything like that. But the way it's stated is a lifetime service contract to the original owner. Rafael, I'll tell you, I did work at a gun store for several years, and I don't think we ever sent in a Bursa for repair or replacement, <laughs> ever. We don't see that many of them. Um, so sure. there are other brands that have very robust warranties, and they're robustly used. Yes, so, uh, yours is not one. Yours is not one of them that is sent back for repair. As a matter of fact, I worked oh, with a guy. He was in the office next to me for in a police department, and that's what he that was his off duty was a thunder. Yeah, he had, and his I think it was his backup also. Yep, All we're right. happy to say we don't see that many of them come back for repairs. And since the Thunder three hundred and eighty was released, we've sold over a million of them in the United States, and we just don't see that many of them come back. Micro nines are out there. They're great. That's a Sig three sixty five, the Ruger Max yep. ten, Springfield Hellcat, and probably more yep. that I'm not even mentioning. How do you compete with them? First of all, right now we only have one striker fire pistol, which is the BP nine. But we've always had this niche that we're a metal framed gun, hammer fired gun, external safeties, etc. That being said, the public they seem to want are these small micro nines. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled. Ah, okay. So that's, that's a little bit of a hint there, which is a great hint. Yeah, I mean, you'll see something in 2024. You'll actually, now that we're making guns in the United, or that we have a factory in the United States, we're going to be able to bring new products to market much faster. Argentina has a lot of bureaucracy. Yeah, lots every of, country you know, does. Things that are going on, you know, it's a, it's more of a socialist country. 
I'm going to say strict gun laws, but they're not that strict because people can buy guns. But to manufacture firearms is not as easy as it is in the United States. Let's just put it that way. So now that we're able to manufacture guns in the United States, you'll see new products coming to market with faster than you've ever seen from Barca before. Plus, you don't have the import regulations to wade through. Correct. And I, that I understand completely. So I'm looking on online, and I I just want to ask you about certain products. The TPR9, hammer fired, nine millimeter. Is I don't remember seeing it in the United States. Is that? It's available? it's here. Okay. It's we sell them. We don't. It's not what we're known for, which is the Thunder 380. But that the TPR9 is the gun that all the police officers in South America and Central America that we were just talking about. That's what they carry. Ah, okay. Got it's it. a phenomenal pistol. It's my favorite gun that we make. It's amazing to shoot. If you go, you know, some YouTube searches and mm-hmm. things like that, you'll see people just falling in love with that gun. Okay, cool. It is very pleasant to shoot. It's very accurate. It's very high quality. It's got a phenomenal trigger. It's a fantastic handgun. Cool. So as I'm wading through the website, you mentioned that the BP9 is the striker fired model that's currently available yep. is the yes. bp380 the exact same gun just scaled down the BP-380, yes exactly it's the exact same gun it was basically made for certain places that nine millimeter is not available to the public in south america and certain countries so that's ah. what we made we sell it here but we, it's few and far between because who's, who's going to buy that instead of the nine is the outside dimensions the same exact same gun oh yeah and then i'd get an i yeah. Totally agree with you. Absolutely. Exact same gun, just chambered in three eighths. So you had kind of alluded to there's going to be some more striker fired stuff yes. coming out. And yes. I, I'm guessing you'll debut it at the shot show. Is that correct? We should have about, I'm going to say we should by then have three new handguns ready to show. Okay. That shot show, uh, brand new handguns. And then we'll also, we should have some variations of some current handguns as well as uh, new accessories that we're, that we're coming out with. Anything so, new in long guns? We're going to have a few new items within our AR platform, but nothing, no like shotguns or bolt okay. action rifles or anything like that. Okay. So you're going to debut this at or around SHOT Show. Yes. And from my experience, once something is debuted at SHOT Show, there's a delay in when the dealers can actually get that. Can you explain what that delay is and why it exists? It, well, it's usually just because people are rushing to get things out for SHOT Show. So they'll usually have some sort of prototype ready. i tell you that one of the guns that we'll be showing at SHOT Show will be ready to ship. The other two, we're going to be cutting it close, but we will have product. It's all developmental stuff. Okay. So you'll see a lot of these guys, they're, they're just... If you don't show it at SHOT Show, if you're waiting for a show, then you'll debut it at the NRA show. But everybody's going to try real hard, whether it's a 3D print or something, just to have something to show people like, hey, this is coming. Sometimes you get lucky with the timing and everything. You're like, hey, this is here. Place your orders. I can ship them tomorrow. Okay. So that's the best explanation I can give for the delay is just people rushing to just have something to show. Okay. Perfectly understandable. So you, yep. we, we met at the USCCA conference. You mentioned, yes. sh- we talked about SHOT, you mentioned NRA. What other yep. conferences do you participate in? SHOT Show and NRA are the two largest. We probably go to 20 other shows throughout the year, but they're all, all the rest of them, except for USCCA and NRA and SHOT Show are mostly order writing shows where right. the, the gun store owners are, are there and, and you just have a real small display and they come by and, and you hope to write some business while you're there. Okay. That answered my question. The USCCA show was my first big one that I've gone to. And I've been shooting for four, over four decades. Uh-huh. Uh, but it was close, so I was able to go. Yeah. Do these shows have a training component or are they... I know USCCA does and NRA does. Do the other ones like yeah. SHOT have like seminars for people to go to? They might have some... There's an industry day before the show, which is like a gigantic range day. Okay. People that are attending SHOT Show can go and actually shoot the guns, meet with people, and, and get in, not so much instruction. 
But but SHOT Show does. It has a thing called SHOT Show University. But again, SHOT Show is not open to the public. It's only open to professionals, whatever you want to call them, media, gu- gun store owners, gun store employees. There's a thing called SHOT Show University, which is open to, if, if you own a gun store, as far as rules and regulations okay. and updates. The other shows that I've seen, again, being order writing shows, there's not really anything like that. It's the dealers come in with, with their inventories and their checkbooks, you know, <laughs> I okay. guess is, is what you'd say. But, but the only two shows that we do during the year that are open to the public is USCCA and the NRA. And those, of course, you're going to get all that training and everything. Right. How many participants usually come to the NRA show and the SHOT Show, for that matter? SHOT Show, they always claim it's about 80,000 people or something. Wow. SHOT Show is huge. It is really, really, really big. And then, I guess NRA, they always say about 65,000. Okay. And it, it's also very big. So, you were at the USCCA show, and if I had to guess between USCCA and NRA, I would say the NRA is probably 50 times bigger. Wow, okay. You saw my booth there at that show, 20 foot by 10 foot, I guess, right. is what I had. Our booth at NRA show is 30 foot by 20 foot. Okay. And SHOT Show is 20 foot by 50 foot. And wow. so we have, a, you know, it's a, bit, it's a structure. But then you've got guys at NRA show and SHOT Show, you know, people like Glock and Taurus. Their booths are like the size of three houses. It's, it's really submersive, lots of audio and visual and, Okay. Light. You're going to have to get to to one or the other at some point. Oh, I absolutely am planning on it. <laughs> no yeah. problem. Uh, Can someone? I walked into Shot Show. My mind was blown. Oh wow! Can someone actually visit all the vendors during the show, or is it just that hugely big that you, you can't? You could, and and Shot Show is four days. Okay. You could. You could for sure. But Shot Show is in two different buildings, and one of the buildings is on three levels and it, it would take you if you really wanted to stop and look at everything it would take you every bit of the four days okay got it It'd really take your time and not just walk down the aisles quickly can you share what your website and contact information is if someone wanted to check out bursa yeah so if you want more information on bursa handguns you can go to bursa.com and also for i would say daily updates weekly updates fun stuff you can follow us at Bursa USA on Instagram and Facebook. Bursa USA, Instagram and Facebook. The Bursa official or oficial is all in Spanish, so that's no fun for most of your listeners. So it's uh, so we've got another one called Bursa USA that caters more towards the public here. Have you had a travel internationally for your for your job? I'm, this is just me being curious. Yes. So I'm obviously working with Bursa. I'm, I go to Argentina to the factory at least once a year, okay. um, sometimes twice. And then we also, for work traveling internationally, there's a show called IWA in Nuremberg, Germany, every year in March, which is, we call it the, the European SHOT Show. Okay. You know, uh, it's like a SHOT Show, but in Europe, it's, we go to that every every year in March as well. Very good. Does Bursa have an instructor discount program? We've got a quote-unquote industry program. Okay. And... We give discounts to industry professionals, sure. Okay, great. I'm gonna I'm gonna offline ask you to send yep, me. Yep. That so any of your listeners that are that are part of the industry or whatever, when they if they want to, they can go on our website and shoot us an email, and we can send the details. Okay. Does that include law enforcement? Law enforcement, industry okay. people, outdoor professionals. Got it. Uh, responders, any of that sort of thing. Perfect. Military. Well. I, I hate to say it. I think you sent me back a couple hundred bucks. Thanks a lot, <laughs> Raphael. <laughs> well, good. That's what we're trying to do here, right? Well, you know, I, I, I'm actually serious, but I, I say that to be funny. What yeah. f- what final thoughts can you offer about Bursa Firearms and where you've come from, where you're going, anything that you'd like to share that maybe I didn't ask you? Of course, you've got your Colts and, and your Smith & Wessons and all that sort of thing. But if you look at the grand scheme of things, Bursa's been around longer than most gun companies out there. It's got a rich history. It's a history that we are the only gun manufacturer in Argentina. We're one of the largest employers in Argentina. It's They, they take a lot of pride in it. So there's a rich history in making a quality product. But I think more importantly is where Bursa's going. 
now that we have a footprint in the United States, now that we've opened a factory, now that we're that we're hiring Americans to build guns, not only to build guns for the United States, but to export back to South America, to export to Europe, to export to, to Asia. I think the interesting thing is to see where we're going to be going, because everything that we've done in the last 65 years is great. But what we're going to do in the next five and 10 years is going to eclipse that. And I'm very excited about it. And I think people that are Bursa fans should be excited about it. And people that don't know about Bursa are going to know about Bursa. And it's going to be fun to, to take this ride. There you have it, folks. Uh, we had an interview with Rafael Del Valle of Bursa Firearms. It is a company to keep your eye on. Research now and, and see what the developments are. Rafael, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to our listeners today. I appreciate you having me. I had a great time. It was a fun conversation, and I don't know how long we've been talking, but it feels like it went by really quick. The views expressed are not those of local community broadcasting, WYMLLP, or its management, volunteers, or underwriters. <laughs>